No matter what your role is, the way you approach playing your agent changes from map to map. Each map has its own playstyle that's unique, and as important as it is to play your own brand of Valorant, it's also just as important to understand how to do so in relation to the map. What's up Pro Guides fam, it's Royal G, and in this video, we're going on a deep dive into the map Ascent to understand how this map plays like, as well as how the best players in the world approach it. From map specifics to team comps to setups, we'll have everything covered so make sure to sit tight and get ready to learn some Ascent. And at the same time, if you're looking to master your individual agent or to build up your fundamentals to help you in any situation and any map, make sure to visit us at ProGuys.com where our Radiant and Immortal level coaches are eager to help you get to the next level. Link is in the description if you're interested and let's jump right in. So to give a quick roadmap on how we'll be approaching this guide, we'll first start with some general information on the map along with map philosophy, then move to meta picks the pros use, and then cover their setups as well as approaches to attacking each site and defending each site. That way, we can start with the general ideas and then build up to a better picture of how the map is played as a whole. As always, we have timestamps, so feel free to jump around. Before jumping into agent picks, it's important to understand the map's layout as a whole. Ascent is a map with a mix of long-range angles and close-quarter duels, so weapons ranging from the op to the judge are all viable. The map has two doors, one located in market connecting to B site, and the other in the garden connecting to A site. These doors are exclusively controlled by the defending side at the start of the round and allow the defending team to drastically change their strategy, which we'll touch a little bit on later. The map is structured to be a more defender-sided map, which is why the ult orbs are oriented more so on the attacker side of the map. It's not impossible for the defenders to take the orbs, but it's also not easy at all considering how deep of control you need to do so safely. One of the most important aspects of Ascent is mid. Ascent is one of the only maps with a true mid, and taking control of mid allows the attacking team to open an extra avenue onto the A or B bomb site. Typically, this is strong because it splits the defenses up. If a team tries to rush out of a main entrance while the enemy is set up, it's really hard to break through and the sheer amount of utility makes it very difficult to win. That's why taking mid control gives multiple entrances that forces defenders to change their setup or spread out utility, making the main entrance weaker. And this leads us to the topic of the doors, which are a map-specific gimmick that plays into this metagame around mid, so it's natural that we should talk more in depth on how the doors change up the play. The state of the A-site door can dramatically change how a round can or will be played and can even in some cases decide the outcome of a round. If the A-site door is left untouched at the start of the round, it could be used for attacking teams to make their site take more successful. This is because rather than a smoke, the door acts more as a sage wall. There is no possibility of timing the attackers on defense, and it's impossible to flash out the door like you would a smoke. This is why as a defender, you most of the time want to break the A door so it forces the enemy team to continue to use smokes to keep the angle into the garden blocked off. But at the same time, it's important to realize that doing so also makes the possibility of a split through cat greater and therefore puts your team at risk if managed poorly. The B door is also super important to understand while trying to defend the B site. If the door stays open, this allows a player to play from market, applying pressure mid and allows them to help on the B site hold. However, if the attackers make it into boathouse, they can close the door splitting the site's defense into two. But before you think about preemptively breaking the door, consider that if the door is broken, it also makes the site much more susceptible to a mid to B split. As such, it's important to figure out how your defensive setup will look before figuring out what to do with the doors. So now that we've got a better idea of the map's structure, let's head into the comp. It's pretty apparent that a meta is more or less established for Ascent, as the agent comp in this video is based off of the combined games of various different pro teams. And this team comp would consist of Jet, Sova, Killjoy, KO, and the only roll up for contest right now is Controller, where there's a split between Omen and Brimstone. So let's talk a bit about each agent specifically. No other duelist comes close to beating Jet as the main duelist on Ascent. Her dash and smokes allow her to contest neutral zones of the map safer than any other duelist in the game. Unlike other duelists, Jet's dash is instant and does not require a kill to get her to safety. Jet is perfect for fast executes on site as well, since getting out of A and B main tends to be more difficult for attackers. However, the biggest advantage Jet brings to a team is the ability to op. Mid on Ascent is hard for the defenders to play forward in, so taking advantage of the longer range with Jet's opping ability is a must. And paired with her dash, she can escape from positions that normally would be death traps. The go-to sentinel on the map is definitely Killjoy. Killjoy's kit is perfect for locking down the hard-to-take chokes of A and B main on defense. Her nades shred any attackers pushing onto the sites and have the ability to split the execute, slowing down the take and making it impossible for the other team to get all members on site. Her turret is amazing for both offense and defense, since it gathers deep information on areas of the map that are much harder to keep tabs on with other sentinel utility. 
so keeping it in positions like the hut outside of B to watch mid and B main is optimal. On defense, the turret can be used to peek off of or to trade, or can be the queue for other abilities to be used in an area like shock darts into B main. But of course, the biggest advantage Killjoy brings to a team is her ultimate. Whether it's on defense or attack, it has the ability to clear entire sites on its own. That's why a big metagame of playing in any map where KJ is prevalent is to figure out ways to shut her ultimate down, like saving Sova ultimates or preparing stall for the site take. On the initiator side, Sova and KO are the undisputed meta picks for Ascent. Sova is by far the best information gathering character in the game currently. His drone and dart can easily clear out most if not all of either sites for his team, especially considering how open each bomb site is. Meanwhile, KO serves a different role as an initiator, which is to put an end to the overwhelming amount of util stopping your team from taking the site. KO also provides a powerful molly to stop defenders in their tracks, or to push enemies out of hard to clear areas like back sites and spots like generator. The way to mastering these agents on ascent is timing. You need to use your utility together with your team. Sova and KO together is a strong combination that makes site takes hard to counter while also functioning as a solid set of eyes for drawn out defender rounds. Rounding out the last spot on the roster is the controller pick. Both Omen and Brim have their pros and cons when it comes to filling this position, so it's important to take a look at their uses separately and make your own decision from there. Brimstone has fantastic util for both offense and defense. First off, his stim beacon is perfect for accelerating your team for fast site executes. Combined with Brim's ability to drop multiple smokes at the same time, he can drastically up the tempo for your team without giving much information away. Brim's molly has multiple case uses for both attacking and defense. On attacking side, you can use a molly to block key angles the defenders could use to catch your team off guard. Or you could use Brimstone's mollies to stall post plants through lineups in his ultimate. On defense, his molly stops rushes in their tracks and helps split the attackers, giving your team time to either support you or to make a play to target one side. Brimstone's ultimate is also a high impact ultimate with great uses on this map. It synergizes well with the fast pushes and can clear out deep angles like backside B or Hell on A if necessary. And at the same time, it functions as a powerful stalling tool, not only for post plants, but for preventing parts of a retake from even beginning. Not to mention the capabilities to break KJ's ult, which is a huge factor to any meta comp on Ascent. Omen is the other controller of choice. The biggest advantage Omen provides over Brimstone is his rechargeable smokes and range of placing them. His smokes allow his team to play much slower and safer. Taking mid control is much less taxing with Omen than it would be with Brimstone. Also, Omen smokes allow your team to safely farm the ult orbs on attack while using a brim smoke would kind of be considered a waste. Shadow Step is also a great ability on Ascent because it enables Omen to play off angles to catch enemies off guard and can be amazing for navigating mid safely whether it's on defense or offense. Additionally, Omen's paranoia is amazing for sight takes, retakes, and to stop pushes in their tracks as well. You just need to make sure the timing on the flash is perfect to get maximum value. Unfortunately, Omen's ult can feel lackluster in most regards. However, it still functions as insurance for if a take doesn't succeed and a swift reposition to the other bomb site is needed. In terms of tempo, Brimstone is a faster paced agent that can play a very explosive playstyle, but risks getting shut down just as quickly. Meanwhile, Omen is a slower and more methodical choice that has more insurance and has generally more influence throughout the round, but lacks tools to push the agenda. Which leads us to the question of the day. Who do you think is more valuable on Ascent, Omen or Brimstone? Heck, you can even say Astra if you're still a believer. Personally, I like to run Brimstone with my team because his kit synergizes very well with fast paced executes and strong post plans. In most cases, I find that slow defaults aren't as effective as explosive psych takes on this map, so Brimstone feels more powerful for more situations. But I also recognize that Omen brings a lot of consistency to slower defaults and also gives more individual playmaking. Let me know what your preferred agent is in the comments below. Now that you know the meta comp the pros are fielding on Ascent, it's important to understand how they play it, and for this we'll start with the defender side, as well as discuss Brimstone for the sake of this video. Most pro teams run a 2-1-2 setup, meaning they play two agents on B, mainly Killjoy and Sova, Jet holds down mid from CT, and KO and Brim lock down the A site. On the B site, you'll usually see Killjoy set up with her mollies on lane and her turret holding in B main while her alarm bot goes to mid. If the turret is holding B main, this acts as a cue for Sova to scan, drone, or shock dart into B main off of its contact. Killjoy sets her alarm bot mid so the mid player can cheat towards A or B depending on her team's information without leaving a gap in the defenses. At the same time, B is usually the favorable position for Sova simply because of how well he can play around his darts and drone. You'll see a lot of Sova's pick up the Guardian or the Odin to take advantage of the paper thin walls in Boathouse and B main. Over on the A site, you have Brim around Tree because it allows him to smoke off all relevant areas of the map such as A main, mid tiles, or top mid, and also B main. 
Meanwhile, KO can knife A main for early info and also has amazing flash potential for Garden and A main. Even though there are no sentinels on this side of the map, there's a lot of stalls in the forms of mollies and suppression. Your goal is to make breaking through cat or A main as annoying as possible, and that's done through solid stall utility as well as a mix up of aggression with KO's aggressive potential through flashes and suppression. On the attacker side, attacking with this comp can be played in a variety of different ways. Brimstone enables explosive executes onto sites with your team's insane information and suppression utility. Killjoy gives fantastic protection to your flanks and acts as an early warning system for aggressive enemy movements. KO flashes and Sova darts can be used to take early mid control if your team is trying to push back the enemy. Meanwhile, Jet is the perfect centerpiece that can make space on site with a click of a button and can contest the long angles of mid without the fear of being stuck in a bad position. So in order to work this map well, it's important to understand that mid control is a heavily important part of splitting up the defenders. In order to do so, it's easier for attackers to establish control with two simple smokes. One smoke is placed on Cat, while the other could be placed between Market and Pizza. This will allow your team to Sova Dart or KO Knife Bench in order to locate any enemies that might contest you. Meanwhile, the smokes prevent help from long angles that have easier escape paths. Once mid control is established, your team could use the new routes created into Market or Cat to help pinch the defenders on site, and it also forces the defenders to split up into sites and give up their center. Defending mid is mainly only doable from Jet and Omen since they have the ability to use movement abilities to escape from bad fights. However, most teams favor playing from CT spawn or pizza to contest mid since pushing farther than that can leave defenders in bad positions with no way out. Moving on to the A site, when attacking the A site, there's a few key steps that need to be taken in order to give your team the best chance of success. First, you want to make sure the door and CT are smoked when you execute. Next, you'll want to make sure your Sova is using information utility to spot enemies out as your team goes in. KO knife could be used mid site or gen, while Sova drones the site out and darts anyone trying to peek. KO can support with flashes and Jet can then use her smoke dash combo going to gen or dice to create space for the rest of your team. One super important part of this take is closing the doors. One player should always be trying to path towards the switch in order to stall retakes and also prevent the enemies from funneling in as your teammates are fighting. A molly heaven is also preferred from an agent like Killjoy to prevent enemies from pushing through and taking a quick peek. Working through mid is also an option to pinch the A site players from tree and main, but in order to achieve this, you need to gain mid control and smoke off the arch and garden. A site is considered harder for the defenders to retake due to more angles and safer positions to play from. That's why you want to keep your team spread out and able to trade and play the bomb. While playing Postplant, try not to stack too many players in Hell. The Hell position is super susceptible to being spammed by all types of guns, and it's impossible to trade your teammates playing from A main or by gen. Running the Brim, Sova, KO, Killjoy comp allows you to keep heavy pressure on the bomb through mollies, darts, and flashes, so A main is a very strong position to keep control of. With all the utility you have at your disposal, it's not rare to see teams approach post plants on A through stall utility alone. Moving on to B site, while trying to execute into the B site, you want to make sure CT and Market are smoked off in order to limit the angles your team needs to fight. Killjoy is a more popular agent played on B, and many Killjoys like to double molly lane so the attackers are forced out into the open while taking damage from spam. That's why one tip you can use is to have Sova bounce shock darts off the top of the windows to try and destroy util placed on the lane. Or, you can try to KO knife Killjoy to disable that setup. Meanwhile, Sova wants to dart back site in order to reveal all of the site before he drones for the team. Once the information is gained, it's a pretty common play for Jet to smoke dash onto switch to close the market door. This makes it so enemies can't walk out of a smoke and timing your team without first mag dumping in order to break it. Lastly, you want to KO or Killjoy molly stairs and molly CT if absolutely necessary. This forces defenders playing stairs out of position and stops CT players from trying to help, but be careful for using too much utility and saving nothing for the post plan. When taking B, it's a good idea to keep one player in B main in order to apply pressure on the defenders retaking. Your goal is to stay alive as long as possible while making it hard for the enemies to progress without potentially being picked off. It's very risky and time consuming to clear B main, which makes your position a power position. Meanwhile, the rest of the team should spread out site and play to stall off one side of B site either through utility or manpower, so maybe stationing players in lane or using mollies to stall either side. And of course, Sova Dart comes in handy here because the walls are paper thin. And that about wraps up our guide on Ascent. Although there's a lot more intricacies to this map, it's admittedly a little hard to fit it all into one video, so feel free to ask questions in the comments or share some tips of yours as well. Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. It's been Royal G, and good luck on the grind.